but yesterday I think, okay, I will, I will skip the, the day and I will do that uh, tomorrow. So uh, today I will uh, uh, water my plant, uh, whatever happens. Well, normally, <laughs> but the war, uh, but um, the rain... yeah, when, when you say um, short, short of water, we need water, we, we call it a water shortage. Yeah. Uh, okay, water shortage. Um, but often we call it a drought, and then we have a hose pipe ban. Normally, nobody says in the UK you can't water your plants. What they say is you can't switch your hose pipe on. And oh, you weren't here in uh, last night's session. I had a terrible occurrence this week. Uh, not yesterday, the day before. I heard this funny noise actually in the sink. I thought I was hearing things. It was a, it was like something was gurgling in the sink, and I was like, "What the?" Heck? And rushing and hushing, and I don't know. It was weird. So I stuck my head in the sink. I was trying to figure out what it was. I couldn't figure it out. So I thought, "Well, maybe it's something from the neighbours because we're directly next to our neighbours." Anyhow, a little bit later, luckily not too much later, I went out. I can't remember why. I think it was to let Lyca out or to bring some washing in. I don't know. And <laughs> I suddenly realised uh, under our carport it was completely covered in water. I mean, it was like just... And, and then I noticed that the hose, the hose pipe was like swinging around with all this water squirting out of it. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> So I had to rush in. I got soaked by this hose pipe and turned it off at the outside tap. And um, I could not figure out what had gone wrong. Uh, and it was only later we worked out that the heat had expanded the water in the hose pipe, that it had, the end of the hose pipe had sort of burst off. And because the, the tap was on, the water just came straight out. So I hope I wouldn't get into trouble for that. It was an accident, but yeah, it was... Oh, I got so wet, guys. I was drenched. <laughs> um, it was what do you mean rats? No, no, no. It was cold Maybe water. Yeah, but the, the uh, heat had obviously expanded yeah, the, the water. Heat. Yeah. Yeah, but by the time all the water the had squirted out, it, yeah. the, the hot water yeah, had gone. Yeah, it, it, it got hot. Yeah. yeah. No, so I mean, just, maybe wow. there is a rat in the, in the pipe. Oh, a rat in the pipe. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I thought maybe Hubby had watered. I mean, silly me. No way. I thought Hubby might have watered the garden on his way out that morning and forgotten to switch it off. But no, it had literally the the um oh, i'm not sure the sprinkler that you could that controls it at the sort of business end of the hose pipe had literally just popped right off just pop <laughs> so shiny what's the weather like where you are are you also suffering in the heat Not actually, because I I live on on the mountain, so uh, I mean the the temperature in the center of the city is very high. But uh, because I I live on the mountain, so the temperature is a little bit lower than. Okay, so you're uh, yeah. This is a problem with living in a city. Um, certainly, if you go to the city centre, city of um, centre in Frankfurt, it's boiling. And we're in the suburbs, so it's not that hot. Oscar was saying yesterday that at ten o'clock at night in Madrid, it's thirty-five degrees. Can you imagine? That's just horrible, horrible temperatures. That's at night. <laughs> But it's not as bad as it was uh, today, as April said. It's not as hot. And at some point yesterday, um, it did actually have a little bit of rain, but not much. It was just a little shower. But you could hear the garden soaking it up, going... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... No, the, we, did, we, we yeah. didn't have that the rain. Uh, in small uh, places, uh, uh, minimal places, uh, there was... A little rain but not a lot but here in my place no only only dark uh, clouds and I think okay wait a minute wait for 15 minutes because now it's only 
five o'clock. Wait until uh, five a, a quarter past five because uh, I know my son will come home uh, around that hour. <laughs> well, otherwise, but then the 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 uh, the black uh, the, the the gray clouds uh, went away was blown away i think but it was windy yesterday it was windy also and then since then no no uh, no clouds anymore until now yeah i mean it is very parched the earth is very parched at the moment and lots of people are going down to the open air swimming pools and the lakes and um just to try and it's the only way you can really cool off because well, unless you go into maybe um, university library or the museum where they've got air conditioning, I'm sure they're getting lots and lots of visitors at the museum because they've got brand new air conditioning system. So <laughs> everybody will be paying to go there to cool down. OK, so I hope you can see the picture in front of you. And that's just to, as a reminder of what the vocabulary challenge was. Um, for vocabulary challenge 65 in case you'd forgotten okay do you remember it April does it bring back memories uh, the beach yes about, uh, about the beach that's right yeah and um, I loved the way you wrote your story by the way uh, that you made it it was a picture of you at the beach <laughs> and you had a day at the beach oh bear with me one second I'll be right back uh, shiny, have a, can you see the picture, Shiny? Yes, I can see it now. And have you got access to the um, text from April as well, Shiny? Yes. Excellent. Good, good, good. OK, so um, obviously, again, I haven't got around to correcting them yet. They will be corrected at some point, but I thought we could uh, discuss um, April's as Alex isn't here and really uh, April it's practically perfect so and I love the way you used um, you emboldened some of the words was that because you thought they were part of the vocabulary or did you want were you not sure yeah uh, that is uh, what I see in the picture okay the vocabulary of the, the of the items or the stuff in the picture OK, so what I suggest, because it'll help me, um, if you, April, start reading it out loud and as you're reading it, I will make some corrections in the text. Um, let me just. Oh, hang on. No, that's not how I want to do it. Hang on. So. Um, so. OK, so April, if you'd like to start reading, right, read the first um, up to to protect our skin. OK. Up to where, Lynn? You in this, it's not quite in paragraphs, so it's a bit difficult to say, uh -huh. but what would be the second paragraph if, if it was a paragraph, the last sentence to protect our skin. OK. Oh, OK. I see. Okay. On the beach. It was summer. The sun was shining and we had the day off. So we went to the beach. There, there were a lot of people there, but we arrived early and we could find a good place near the water and put our stuff there. What did we bring there? We had our swimming suits, a beach chair, diving goggles, a snorkel, a pair of flippers and an inflatable bed for our water activities. We didn't forget our hat and our cap to protect our face from the scorching sun. To protect our skin, we brought sun, sun milk too. 
Okay, so Shiny, what do you... Yes, I know you missed the actual challenge, but um, never mind. It was, uh, you know, do what you can when you can. And if you can't, don't worry too much about it. So Shiny, would you like to read my correction of the same sentences? If you know what, if you understand what I mean, if you scroll down and then read the same text that April just read, but with the corrections. Have you got it? Yes, but I, I don't see your correction. OK, it might be. OK, I'll, I'll post it up here for you. OK, there you are. Can you see it in local chat? Oh, yes. Ah, uh, I refreshed the, the page. Uh, no, please just post it on this chat box. Uh, it was summer and the sun was shining and we had the day off. So we went to the beach. There were a lot of people there, but we arrived dirty. So we were able to find a good place near the water and put our stuff there. What did we take up with us? We had our swimming suits, a beach chair, diving goggles, uh, goggles, uh, a snor snorkel, a pair of flippers, and an inflatable bath for our water activities. We didn't forget our hat and our cup to protect our faces from the scorching sun. The prote to protect our skin, we brought sun lotion too. Yeah. <laughs> Inflatable. Uh, uh, actually, when I was at school, uh, I learned that uh, you have to, uh, in if you have you make of you write a story, a text. Uh, I was advised to make make every sentence short, so that's why I uh, said it was summer. Point that. Uh, uh, Period, yes.
Okay. Yeah, I am. <laughs> you see? <laughs> it's open. Uh, okay, take this as. And I have actually a little bit. Uh, uh, I I'm not really happy with my sentence because I have always. Uh, I need always to write hour, hour, hour. But is it necessary? I don't. I'm not sure what did you. Well, yes. I mean, in the correction, you could you could have written what did we take, but you've put what did we take with us. That's absolutely fine. Um, we. We went, that's fine. We, uh, and then put our stuff there. I mean, how else would you say that? You need, when you've got stuff, you need to say who does the stuff belong to. So don't worry about that, it's fine. Yeah, because I have, I, uh, I have the impression that I uh, repeated too much. We didn't forget our head and our cap. Well, yeah, you could things. write, if you wanted to write that, I mean, it's not wrong. If you wanted to write that more succinctly, shall we say, um, we didn't forget our hats. Um, in fact, I'd say cap, caps and hats to protect um, our faces from the scorching sun. Yeah? Um, in fact, you could say, yeah, to protect our faces because it's caps and hats. Uh, to protect our skin, we bought sun lotion too. I'm not sure what else you could say there to protect our skin. Um, for skin protection, you could say, instead of to protect our skin. I'll put that in brackets, okay? So, for skin protection, we bought sun lotion too, okay? But sometimes you're forced to say our... No other word should do. Ah, shiny. That's very good question. And um, as an English teacher who used to teach out and about in Germany, I can assure you there are teaching books out there that have got so many mistakes in them. <laughs> it's, a re it's really difficult to know. Uh, the best thing is to use your judgment. If you find lots of mistakes in a book that you've brought, that you've bought, uh, do what I did. I bought a maths book once and I found several mistakes in the first few pages. So I took it back and I got a full refund. And then I told, I told my um, tutor that the book they'd recommended was full of mistakes. They'd never noticed. They had never noticed. Um, and I'm no mathematician. So how they got away with it for so long, I'll never know. But yes. The, the publisher, I should say, not manufacturer, it's a book. The publisher did say um, it was an error, which is why I prefer online books. You tell them there's a mistake, they can fix it. The next time you open the book, the mistake has gone. Fantastic. <laughs> um, I would say don't read badly written books, but um, how can you tell whether it's badly written or ba badly published, badly edited? <sighs> You have to use your judgment or use recommendations from other people, okay? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's very subjective. What's a good book? I mean, for one person, a good book is, I don't know, Pride and Prejudice, Oliver Twist, uh, Shakespeare... I, I don't think they're particularly good for English learners. So to me, for an English learner, uh, a good book would be something like I read um, the other week, which was a terrible book, really, but very good for learners because it was contemporary, it was modern, um, 
it was just so fluffy. The storyline was ridiculous, but it had a beginning, a middle and an end with very simple English. So for learners, it was very good. I, I still regret the fact I wasted two days of my holiday reading it. I left it at the campsite, actually. It was that bad. <laughs> I thought it's perfect summer holiday reading material. Popped it on the shelf as a giveaway. <laughs> How do you know? Well, that's where the internet comes in as well, Shiny. I mean, I've made recommendations for a long time on the English magazine. And um, there are recommendations of what I consider to be good books there. And what I consider to be good learning books and good course books as well. Um, but um, you might disagree with me. Somebody might disagree with me. Some people don't like English in use series, but I think it's fantastic. <laughs> but ask, go to, um, there are also reviews as well. There are reviews on Amazon. There are reviews on good books. Uh, you know, there's plenty of material out there now. You're not on your own trying to find something. But make sure you find a book that you're interested in. That's one of the key things. And don't let people be snobby about it. Don't get them. You don't let them get you to read Kafka if you want to read. I don't know Georgette Heyer. Oh my goodness, I'm dating myself there. Yeah, <laughs> no, don't ask me first. <laughs> Go to a bookshop, leaf through the books, find a book where you like the writing that's presented to you. That's where that's where bookshops sometimes beat online. But also trust the online reviews as much as you can, with the understanding that some authors review their own books. OK, so April, let's carry on. If you could read what you wrote first, OK. The next... Uh... Yeah, I've just put it in local chat. I think it's easier. <laughs> oh, OK. For the little one, we set up a small tent so he could sit... He could sit and play there out of the sun. We had also a shovel and a bucket with us so he could collect starfish, seashells and some mussels. He was also very happy with a sand castle that his dad built for him. I also brought a parasol, a pair of sunglasses and a book. My sister rented a windbreak and a chase launch with a sunshade there be, with a sunshade there because he wanted to sit out of the wind and out of the sun very good uh, okay was, you uh, just yeah was, oh, what? I, you, I wasn't sure the last one the I, muscles, yeah, you sort of stumbled test? there didn't you <laughs> were there muscles <laughs> um yeah you can collect muscles on the beach absolutely you have to be very careful though because uh if they're on the beach, they might be dead and you don't want to eat, um, you don't want to cook mussels that are rancid and... and uh, but what is in the picture, Lynn? The, the, the grey one? Uh, just ah, now I won't uh, be able to tell you that, I don't think, because I can't look at the picture because I can't stream it. It's oh, too okay. much like publishing it, but um, I think so. I think you're right. There were sort of little, there might have been cockles, there might have been mussels, might have been winkles, but I think they were mussels. <laughs> Okay, so I love the use of for the little one. That's very good. Uh, we set up a small tent. Yep. So he could uh, these these. Have you seen these that you can buy? Um, they look like tents. Are they tents? Would you sleep An in one? Well? maybe. Lynn? But I can't think that it's an ego because I, I, I can't uh, um, accept an igloo in... Uh, They're not the igloos, beach. no. It's too no. warm. <laughs> no, but because when you say tent, you might think of somewhere to sleep, okay? Then we do put a word in front of them, an adjective. To describe what kind of tent what word do you think we use suddenly as an adjective to describe the tent 
Where are we sitting at the moment? A beach tent. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, just a beach tent. Yes. So, for the little one, we set up a small beach tent. And that way, you know, it's, um, they've got a funny word for them. In fact, in Germany, they call them muschel, uh, which is like muscle, because they look like a shell. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so he could sit and play there out of the sun, which is really important. Now, have you heard, guys, that they're trying to make it law? Uh, they're trying to pass a law that says if your child gets sunburnt, it's child neglect. Have you heard of this? Oh, yeah, of course. I think so. Yeah? Yeah, even for your dog. And do you think it's um, child abuse? Yeah, actually, you you don't do that. Uh, um, um, how do you say it, Lee? Purposely. But, on purpose, uh, or purposefully, on purpose. but on purpose, on purpose is better. Purpose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, on purpose, but. Uh, People uh, nowadays, uh, I don't know if the, the, the judge use that word, child abuse, but I see in the media, uh, right, uh, right to, uh, yeah, it happy, uh, the media is happy to write sub, uh, that, that kind of word, child abuse, then it is more, more, uh, everybody will, will read that, I think. It's but sort of actually, inflammatory language, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I said the same. So, did you ever get sunburnt as a child? Have you ever been sunburnt? No, even now, not. Oh, I have, I have uh, got one, to, but but I was already an adult, and uh, it was my fault, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as an adult, you can't really blame your mum. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the uh, in the mountain, and in the mountain, you don't feel that, really. Eh, it yeah. is uh, a lovely so, uh, sun and the, the temperature is not so bad and you just sit there and swimming and uh, in the swimming pool. No, but it was uh, not very high actually. And uh, in the evening then I felt, I felt that uh, my nose <laughs> is, <laughs> is burning. Mm. Did you look like Rudolph? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can I can remember um, I, when I went to school, I got sunburned a couple of times on sports days. Or I got sunstroke once, uh, but nobody thought anything of it back then. What about you, Shiny? Did you ever get sunburned as a child? Would you consider it child neglect or abuse if a parent lets their child get sunburned? What do you think, Shiny? <laughs> No, I never get sunburn because my parent never took me to 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 I mean outside of some some places take me out took me out. Uh, uh, by the way, I I can't swing, so oh, I don't like to go okay. to. <laughs> yeah, I don't like to go to beach or or a pool. Okay, you've never learnt to swim. Well, if it's any consolation to you, I was about 21, 22 when I first learnt to swim. In fact, I started to canoe before I learnt to swim. So it's never too late. <laughs> and if you were here at the moment, you'd wish you could swim because it is so hot. It's just such a nice way to cool down. Um, yes, you exactly. You can get sunburnt in the garden or at in the park you can get sunburnt walking to the shops if you don't wear a hat uh, when the sun is this strong it doesn't take long but nowadays i'm much more careful i mean i don't sunbathe i stay in the shade um, in fact we should really bring you a parasol april um, actually no april's okay she's got her hat on but i think shiny you better have a parasol we'll put you in the shade there you go <laughs> 
<laughs> so you don't get sunburnt, okay? I don't want to be accused of um, student abuse, <laughs> student neglect. Just okay. before I, mm -hmm. uh, be just before I uh, wrote my text, I read in the newspaper in America was a uh, teenage uh, mother, uh, low, uh, uh, teenage. Uh, so he, 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 she was alone. She has no friend or husband. Uh, she left her two daughters in the in the car for eighteen hours. I, uh, purposely, on purposely, because she she does she didn't like uh, the the children. She was she she found that uh, she was too young for the children. But the, the children the, were already six or seven and and three. So I think something like this. With two in the car in the in in it was in California, I think, and it was so hot. So the next day the next day when uh, she. And they, she know it, and uh, a friend uh, warned her, and she said, "No, I don't want to, to to take my children." She waited until the next day. The next day, the children was still alive, was still alive, but uh, when the, but it was very sick. They were very sick, and uh, in this hospital, they died. Oh, oh! Thanks yeah. for that, April. That's so cheerful. Cheers! <laughs> I, I hadn't read heard of that. Story. You read, you read story. I know you like stories. Oh, that's upsetting. <laughs> that. Oh, that's awful. The poor kids. Oh, what? That's just terrible, isn't it? I mean, that that's just soul destroying, isn't it? When you hear about things like that. Shiny, take the mic. Shiny, have you? Okay, go. I, I think uh, it happened every year here. Uh, I I can uh, read this news every year. So sad, and I, I, uh, I'm not sure we are, are we talking the same thing. I mean, they they put children in their car and. For that, in them, uh, wait for their parents. Oh, yeah, that sounds thing? that sounds similar. But this this was done deliberately, shiny, in order to get rid of the kids. So that's what it sounds like, anyway. Yeah, this they, is even they, worse. I mean, people yeah, make they, accidents. You know, people do things accidentally or thoughtlessly. That's one thing. But are you saying they do no. it deliberately? Ooh. The, they they do it deliberately uh, in in some way. They they just uh, it's it's lousy for them to take them with take children with them. I mean, they uh, for example they because because uh, like casino. I I don't know how to say it in. What, they want to go out, so they leave the children alone, and they're not allowed to take the children into a casino they, they for gambling, yeah? For, yeah, yes. Oof. And they, they can't, they couldn't take the children with them, but they, they don't have any, they didn't have any place to, you know, to, or, or people to take, it, uh, take after them. So they, they just... It's it's so irresponsible. I I think they they do know what will happen to their children, but the, they they just know that they just didn't realize it would cause them to death. Well, the next story you read about that, send it to April. <laughs> she loves that kind of story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's a really tough one. What can you say? It's not normal or natural not to look after your children. It's our nature to care for our offspring. So something's interrupted their natural uh, instinct to protect and look after their children in some way. And um, yeah, that's 
tough. It's a tough one. I wouldn't want to be the judge in that court case because, uh, yeah, that would make me very angry. But you have to have some compassion for the people who do it. There's something wrong with them, basically. OK, let's get back on to the more cheerful topic of at the beach. Um, no, no abandoned babies. In fact, you're looking after the baby very well. The little one has got his own little beach tent. <laughs> <laughs> but Lynn, uh, how, what is the, the English word for uh, a mother that uh, has to, be, to, to stay alone? Uh, a single so without mother. Without a partner? A single, single mother. mother. Yeah. yeah. That is, yeah. See, you see, I, my, my English is deteriorate. No, not at all. You can't remember everything. I, I forgot an English word yesterday, okay? I could only think of the German word, <laughs> Umleitung. And I was going to, I had to say to Hubby, what's Umleitung in English? And he went, he sort of thought about it and he went, ah, diversion. I went, oh, that's it, yes. So it happens to even a native speaker. Don't worry about it. It doesn't mean your English is bad. It just means you've forgotten the word or you you can't remember the word right there and then. Okay. Now, the um, I'm just doing some more corrections. Okay. Uh, let me see. So that Shiny can read the corrected version. Okay. Um Oh, yes, and uh, yes. <laughs> okay, so, Shiny, if you'd like to read the corrected version. For the little one, we <coughs> set up a small beach tent so he could sit and play there out of the sun. We also had a bucket and spade with us so he could collect starfish, seashells and some mussels. He was very happy with the sand castle that his dad built for him. I also brought a parasol, a pair of sunglasses and a book. My sister rented a Windbreak and some low, some lounger with the sunshade because she wanted to sit out of the wind and out of the sun. Very good, very good. A sun lounger, owl sound. A sun lounger. Sun lounger. Yes. So have a look at the original, then have a look at the correction. And you can see I used beach tent. That makes it clear that it was a, one of these little half tents that are really for shade rather than for sleeping in. Although I, I think some people do take them down to the beach and on very hot, warm nights, they will just sleep on the beach. Um, so, yeah, maybe. Um, but if you notice, I, I did change the next sentence. Can you spot the difference between what April wrote, uh, what you wrote April, and what I've corrected it to. And do you know why? What? Yes, yeah, spade. Yeah. What did I change it from? Shovel. Shovel. Yeah. Now, the thing is, <laughs> um, a shovel can be a spade and a, a spade can be a shovel. Okay. So if you look in front of you, April, I've put a shovel there. And it, it could be called a spade, you know, a garden spade. But when you say shovel, you think of a coal shovel or you know, something large and quite substantial. OK. So when we say, we don't say shovel and um, bucket, we say bucket and spade. And let me just bring it over because we've got a bucket and spade for some reason. When we're talking about sand castles and digging in the sand and going for looking for shellfish, etc., unless you are a professional <laughs> um, beachcomber, you wouldn't take a shovel with you. You would take what we call a bucket and spade, much smaller, much more portable to take down to the beach with you. Okay. But how can you make a 
uh, sandcastle where we've only a, a, a spade. It's too... No, no, a to, bucket and spade. Yeah. If you have a look at the bucket and spade... Yeah? Yeah. In front of you, the, there's a blue... What's and a red. Things? Yeah, blue bucket and a red spade. And that's a bucket and spade. So you basically... I don't know why my... Um, grommets have moved but they have bear with me I, they've changed let me just move them back yep there and there I'm just being fussy now but I am fussy as you know there you go <laughs> so the shovel yeah it's huge it's big it's industrial shovel you could dig concrete with that shovel okay but the bucket and spade, it's more of a toy. It's more for children. And you put the wet sand into the bucket and then you tip it out and shape it into a sand castle. Or you go into the rock pools and you see if you can find any shellfish and starfish and crabs. Okay? <coughs> but you can really dig this, the sand. <coughs> oh my goodness. With the spade. With this spade, I think. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you need a shovel for any heavy work. But when you're going down, <laughs> imagine if you're going down to the beach and you take that great big shovel with you. <laughs> you might get into <laughs> trouble as well for just destroying the beach. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that professional mussel collectors don't take that thing with them but not for a day at the beach with your family you just wouldn't take a shovel what are you going to do bury grandma <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> hello reem hi how are you oh i don't know if reem's got voice but you're not a beach goer well i don't know shiny there is something nice about being on the beach and that it's um i don't like going to crowded beaches i mean this isn't my idea of a nice day at the beach because there's too many sun loungers and there's too many towels on the beach. There's too many people, basically. But if you go to a nice, quiet beach, you find a shady spot and you just read a book or or just listen to... You can listen to the sea, maybe the voices of people walking along the beach. There is something nice about it. But going down there just to sunbathe and fry yourself, no, I, I don't get that either. Okay, so, um, yeah, bucket and spade, not a shovel and a bucket, okay? Okay. In fact, I can't resist it. I'm going to have to start <laughs> building a sandcastle. That's the other thing you can do, Shiny. <laughs> it's just lovely building sandcastles. You went to a private beach once, still not fun. Maybe it's the people you went with, Shiny. <laughs> Normally when I go to the beach, I end up, I don't know, writing something in the sand, very large, getting lots of things, doing some artwork in the sand because you know it's going to be temporary, um, building sand castles, burying my husband, <laughs> so only his feet are poking out and his head, of course, <laughs> and reading. Now, I noticed earlier, Shiny, I think you said you can't read outside in the sun. It was it, You nearly blinded yourself. Is that right? Oh, yeah, I tried to read a book on the beach, but it was impossible for me. The sun almost blinded me, is what you'd say. Uh, almost blinded me. And I agree with you. It's really difficult to... Um, yeah, it's really difficult to read in bright sunlight. And it's really difficult to use a laptop or a tablet in the sun. Why, why is it difficult to use a laptop or a tablet in the sun? Any ideas? Is that a reflection we call that, Link? Yeah, a reflection. I mean, on a white page, then the sun reflects back into your eyes and then that, that's what can blind you. But it's not so much the reflection on a tablet or a laptop. It's more the glare. We'd call it a glare. Yeah? 
the screen, the glare on the screen makes it impossible. It just turns it into almost a mirror so that it does reflect. You know, you can see your face, but you can't read anything. <laughs> it's terrible. If somebody could invent a polarised tablet where you could use it in full sunlight, I think that would be extra cool. <laughs> okay, so the next one that I changed um, was the chaise long. Okay, you wouldn't take a chaise long to the beach. Truly, you wouldn't. Oh, what is uh, chaise? Oh, okay. That's like, like the sofa, you mean? Exactly, yes. <laughs> oh, that's a chair. Hang on. Uh, let me just delete that one. I'm just... Oh, okay. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I've got one that would be like a chaise long, but maybe this one. I'm not sure. Mm, yeah, that's more like a chaise long here. So chaise long is, again, it's not really that much like a chaise long. Difficult one. I don't know if I've got any in my... I'm sure I have. I'm sure I've got one somewhere. Uh, da, da, da. So, bedroom. It's a tea, maybe, this one. Hmm. Now, again... <coughs> hmm, sorry. Hmm. No, I don't think I've got one. But you know I, it couldn't be a chaise long. That's for home then, in the living. Do you want to know, Lin, uh, Rim, <laughs> what we are doing? We are on the beach. Lynn is, is uh, building sun castle and we have to read. <laughs> we have to read at the text from the vocabulary challenge 65. My text. You know, Lynn? Uh, do you know uh, Rim? Vocabulary challenge? Can you hear me, Lynn? Rim? Okay. <laughs> Yes. Ah, good, so, good. Hi, April. Hi, Chai. Hi, everyone. Okay, so what we're doing is April's reading out <laughs> the text she wrote, and then Shiny is reading out the corrected text. Okay, and then we're comparing the two. Okay, okay so we're nearly finished, okay. but never mind. Okay. <laughs> So we'll do a little shorter one this time, April. If you'd like to read this part of your text. Okay. Uh, it was really beautiful weather there. The sky was blue with some clouds and we saw a couple of swallows flying. When say that one swallow doesn't make a summer, but there were at least four swallows in the sky at that moment so that day should be a summer day that was for sure very nicely written um now i'm going to go and have to check the actual text oh this it doesn't bode well for today's uh <coughs> session later you know i've definitely got a frog in my throat <laughs> So bear with me a second. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, got it. Um, 
Yeah, you've put uh, four swallows. <laughs> now, are they likely to be swallows? Can you see the picture, uh, Reem and Shiny? Do you think they're swallows? What do you think, guys? I've never seen. It. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know a lot about uh, birds, Lynn. So okay. <laughs> You just realised that the seagulls are quiet. Exactly, okay. shiny. Definitely seagulls, April. <laughs> Swallows are much sw smaller. Okay, and they tend to be more inland birds. I'm not saying you'd never see a swallow along the coast, but it would be more inland, maybe with the houses, because there's not much for them to eat uh, out at sea. Or, I mean, some swallows do nest in cliffs, I believe. But um, no, the birds in the picture are definitely seagulls. And just for shiny, <laughs> I've brought Squawky Seagull in. <laughs> Hang on, let me just uh, change him. <clears throat> so he can fly around. Where is he? Oh, I can't find this. What color has a swallow then, Lynn? Um, they're more... Also white? No, they're more black and white. Okay. Ah, I don't know what's happening to this particular seagull. He might have to disappear. Shiny will be pleased. <coughs> ah, there he is. Okay, I can find it now. So let me just look him up here. <laughs> hey, right, just for, just for shiny. Because I know she wants to hear him, really. It's not right, Lynn. Um, well, okay. Swallows are black and white. Okay. Um, seagulls can come in all sorts of different colours because there are different types of seagull. There are grey gulls. There are... Uh, then you've got terns, etc. So... Um, those particular seagulls are just white seagulls, okay? Probably the common European seagull, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not an ornithologist, by the way. <laughs> okay, so four, not swallows. Okay. Okay, and then you wrote, so that day should be a summer day, that was for sure. Hmm. <clears throat> Now, unfortunately, because they are actually seagulls, you can't use your nice saying. Because there is a saying, one swallow does not make a summer. But um, they're not swallows, so I'm afraid it's going to have to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what might, you, what might you be able to say about seagulls? then there were lots of seagulls there what could you say about seagulls any ideas so if you had to replace something about seagulls rather than about swallows any ideas um, I don't know. Is there, is there any saying about seagulls? There's not a saying about them, no, not in relation to summer. But there, there are things you can read about seagulls in the press. What do you have to be careful of if there are seagulls about? What might seagulls do? Cops? Sorry? No, that's not for, <laughs> that's not for <laughs> seagulls. <laughs> That's for uh, the other birds. <laughs> what, you mean vultures? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, vultures. no, no. I mean, yes, seagulls will probably eat um, any dead things they find because they'll eat anything, pretty much, seagulls. But no, not particularly related. No, they steal. Yeah, that's it. Not hijack it, shiny, because you're never going to see it again. They'll steal your food. They will steal your ice cream. They'll steal your sandwiches. They are thieves. They will attack you for your fish and chips. 
Uh, if you want to check me on this, just Google Seagull Attack UK. Okay, and they're really cheeky little things. They've got no fear. Um, seagull attacks in the UK. Every year there are stories of people being attacked and mobbed by seagulls for their picnic, for their ice cream, etc. So maybe you could write, I'll leave that with you, April, if you want to uh, correct it, then um, you can. If not, we'll just keep it with the, um, uh, so, hang on. <coughs> Okay, so let's give Shiny her correction to read out. In fact, Reem, um, you haven't read yet, so let's give you this to read out, Reem, okay? Yes, it was really beautiful when we were there. The sky was blue uh, with some clouds, and we, we saw a uh, week. So a couple of things flying and we are at least of them. It was really summer's day. It was for, for, for sure. Yep, it was a real summer's day, that was for sure. Now, I'm sorry, my mistake. Um, it should have said... It should have said this. I cut and paste the wrong bit okay so try reading this ream okay yeah we saw a couple of swallowing uh, swaggles we saw a couple of swaggles flying around there were at least four of them okay not swaggles <laughs> seagulls <laughs> Yeah, seagulls. That's it. <laughs> I think. I guess a swoggle would be a, cro a cross between a swallow and a seagull. I guess a swoggle. <laughs> seagulls. Yeah. Excellent. Well yeah. read. Nicely read. Okay. Okay. So okay. Um, then April, if you'd like to read this bit. Okay. <clears throat> we really enjoyed our day off and we felt safe there because a lifeguard kept an eye on beach goers the whole time, standing near his lifeguard tower, ready to help when somebody was in peril. It was also necessary to follow the instructions of the lifeguard. For example, you were not supposed to go into the water where a red flag was added which meant that the sea there could be dangerous. Very good. And it happened uh, here. Oh, really? This, uh, yeah. This Is this going to be another already. cheerful story, April? Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I won't oh, tell no. them. <laughs> I won't tell you then. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sometimes I do think ignorance is bliss. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so shiny if you would like to read this next bit oh let me put a line in so you know where we're up to okay shiny we really enjoyed our day off and we felt safe there because uh 
because a lifeguard was there keeping an eye on the beach goers the whole time, standing near his lifeguard tower, ready to to help if someone somebody got into trouble. It is important to follow the instructions of the lifeguard. For example, you were not supposed to go into the water because there was a red flag flying, which means that the sea there could be dangerous. Very good. Well done. Nicely read. Okay, so let me put the lifeguard station up. Now, sometimes yeah, you could say lifeguard tower or lifeguard station. Yeah, and some beaches um, do actually have these people. Um, and April's quite right. When there's a red flag flying, you don't go in the water. Okay, so nicely red, shiny. Okay. Oh, sorry. Two, two, two. Okay. Um, so, any... Can you spot some of the corrections there? And the the peril, you change that into trouble? In peril? Yes. In peril. Yeah. In peril. Oh. I think if you're in peril, you're in immediate, uh, unforeseeable danger. Okay. There is a song for those in peril on the sea. And um, that's for people whose job is it, it is to be in, on the sea. Most people get into trouble in the water because they're not expecting trouble. They're not. I mean, they are in peril, yes, but they say they got into difficulties sometimes. You'll hear that, yeah, in case they get into difficulties or in case they get into trouble. Okay, any other questions? If you notice, um, I changed it from <coughs> um, where a red flag was added. Okay, you put where a red flag was added. What, what verb did I use instead of added? Oh, flying. I yes. thought that uh, flying. Yeah, we uh, fly the flag. Okay. Oh, okay. And what do you call that? Uh, what is the word for uh, the movement of that uh, flag, Clint, uh, by the wind? The flag Ooh, move? Good question. No, no, you wouldn't say the flag moved because it doesn't. It, it more, it flaps. Um, that's a oh, good flaps, one. Waves, yeah. it waves. Yeah. Um, flutters. Yeah, the flags. It depends on the strength of the wind, really. <laughs> so the flags were fr fluttering in the breeze. Yeah? Um, or the flag was waving. Okay. Flapping as well, like the wings of a bird flap. And it, it really depends on the, the movement of the flag and how strong the wind is. It's not one word, I'm afraid. That would be too easy, wouldn't it, if there was one word? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. But we often say the flags were waving in the wind, okay? But yes, you wouldn't say the flag was added um you know you you'd got your bucket and you added more sand to the bucket or you were collecting seashells and you added more shells to the um to the collection yeah to add something to something else but a flag has just been put there yeah there was a flag flying and you what, also put which meant the, the that the sea there could be dangerous, but it doesn't. It means the sea could be dangerous because the flag has a special meaning. 
So it will always mean that if you see a red flag flying on a British beach or a European beach, I think it's universal now, don't go in the water. Strong currents or um, high tide, maybe with some rough weather, then it's dangerous there to swim. Okay. I, I actually, at that moment, I was uh, searching for a word that uh, will say, uh, so you, the, the lifeguard uh, now that is dangerous there, so he, she, he uh, comes there with the, 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 the stick. No, not a stick. What, what is uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is a stick, but flag the flagpole. We have a special a word, the flagpole. Uh, the flagpole? Yeah. Uh, and uh, he put it there in the sun. What, normally, what say, normally the poles would pole? already be there. Um, you just put, he raised the flag. He raised the red flag. Ah, okay. okay. That is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> if this is a manned beach, a beach with a lifeguard, um, that that flagpole will always be permanently there, and sometimes it will be on the the, the lifeguard's hut. Yeah, it would always be on the lifeguard's hut. Uh, there isn't one flying here, so I guess it's safe for us to go in the water. <laughs> okay, so very nicely um, written. I'll just read the last sentence, which I've corrected because we've run out of time. And that was before going home, we washed the sand off under an open air shower. Yeah, There's no need to say we washed the sand off our skin or we washed the sand off our bodies. Yeah, um, We washed the sand off ourselves maybe, but it's just we washed. People will know you went under the shower and you washed off the sand. Okay, the worst part of going to the beach. Shiny, I know you don't like going to the beach, but the bit I hate hate about going to the beach is getting the sand out from between your toes it's so painful i have only bad memories yeah, of me that too. yes <laughs> i'm just trying to see if i can find a red flag but i don't think i can so we can say we can warn people not to go in there but i don't think i can i've got world flags but i haven't got a danger flag i'll have to make one i think <laughs> I've got a pirate flag. Well, hey, <laughs> there you go. We can have a pirate flag flying. <laughs> the skull and crossbones. <laughs> okay, so um, on that, thank you very much for doing that, April, and taking part in the challenge. Don't forget, it's moved into the vocabulary challenge group now. Um, it's got its own group. So if you do want to um, take part then you'll need to join this group which I think shiny in April you've already done so which is great and um, as I say no saying that we'll do that we'll do this week's challenge next week we might do a different challenge. I've got a different challenge in mind for next week a previous challenge so uh, but we'll get round to it at some point Okay, any, any questions before I disappear? Don't forget we're in TGIF on Discord. I just wonder why you put an uh, possessions apostrophe S uh, uh, after the summer, in summer's day, Lynn. Can't you say just summer day without apostrophe, um, apostrophe S? It was a nice summery day. It, no, because it's a day belonging to the summer. So I'd usually put apostrophe s it was a nice what, summer's what day did, uh, what did uh cliff richard uh, sing then lynn a summer day or summer's day i'm sorry cliff richard yeah that's she summer has, holiday uh, has, uh, yeah that's uh, summer, summer holiday, holiday yeah. yeah that's a holiday Without in the summer eh? yeah but the the day belongs to the summer the holiday just is in the summer but the day belongs in the summer so it belongs so it's a summer's ah. day you can have a summery day i mean i'm sure you could say summer day but i can't think of a, a, way, a time i would say that um um yeah would, would i say summer day or summer's day in any context um
maybe it's because I was brought up on Shakespeare, but I, I would always put Summer's Day for some, some reason. Um, or summertime? Summertime is fine, but that's one word, yeah? Time in the summer, but the day belongs to the summer. Summer's day. It, it, it might be just because I'm British. Maybe Americans say summer day, but it sounds funny to me. Even when you say it, it's just like, oh, no, that's wrong. But I don't think it's particularly wrong, but I corrected it because it's British English. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, Lian. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, take care then. I'll maybe see you in TGIF. If not, have a lovely weekend. Okay, I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, have Shiny. Nice Bye, 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 April. Shiny.